Good morning. I realized that poor Noah had to stand and back up, back up, thinking that he pushed the candle, would back towards the candle, and he was backing up. Literally, I'm like, okay, typical communication gap there. <laughs> Good morning, all. Good morning. I'm going to have to echo Sawyer this morning. Sawyer said over in Sunday school, he said, I can't believe it's the third Sunday of Advent. <laughs> wow. It went fast. But with Christmas on a Saturday, the Sundays get pushed forward. Next year, Christmas is on a Sunday. So I guess I said earlier, this is the earliest it could be. I guess next year is technically the earliest Advent can fall. And then we should fall back a little bit and hopefully get that Sunday between Thanksgiving and Christmas again, the early Christmas or Thanksgiving Advent. But it doesn't always work that way. So, but Thursday night, 7 p.m. here is our program. The kids are going to do their part. They also have a little musical surprise for you. Okay? So come see what it is. It's pretty cool. And then the choir is going to do our uh, cantata, but that will be Thursday at 7. And then next Sunday is the Christmas program and cantata. Uh, both Thursday and Sunday we will be showing what was taped last week or recorded last week. Thanks to Susan and everybody that, that helped with that. Thanks to all the kiddos that took part. Good thing we did it last week because we yes. got some sick this week. <laughs> so, but it went really well. And it and turned out well. It turned okay, and we, but it went really, really well. And we were gone by 12 20, 12 30, something. It, we, it wasn't too late because uh, I think I got home about 1 10 and I went to the grocery store a couple times on the way back. So, uh, it went very smoothly. And thank you all. And, and that that's a hybrid this year because we're going to show part of the program and they're going to do part of the program, but at least the pageant part was recorded, right. which was with kids being sick and not knowing and, you know, with a smaller church, all it takes is one or two to be past the stomach virus around and your program is gone. So thank you all. It went really well. And thanks for all the people who helped us with that. Our Christmas Eve services are on the 24th at 10 p.m. Uh, a lot of candles and communion. Basically, uh, not a lot of communion, but <laughs> it's not a buffet. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you've ever heard Mark Lowry, he he talks about bringing his can of spray cheese for you know the little wafers because it would be easier to make it taste better. But uh, and then we won't we do not have church on Christmas, and so the Sunday after Christmas this year will be the uh, we will have church. So. Next Sunday, we will not have practice. We won't have anything at 9 o'clock. We won't do anything until 10 o'clock. If we do it Thursday night, there's no use to turn around and practice it again Sunday. It's going to be as good as we get, probably. So, And we don't want to peak. <clears throat> Believe it or not, having done plays, you realize sometimes people peak. Right? Anytime we did a play, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, if people wanted the best time to see it, they need you to come on Friday. Because they always peak on Friday, and Saturday wouldn't be quite as good because the guard got let down. So I need a couple of volunteers for a couple of things. If someone be, would be willing to water the poinsettias after church, I think they're a little dry. And, and, okay, thank you. Uh, and I need a group or a couple people to do the candle lighting for the fourth Sunday of Advent next week. If somebody would like to do that, just let me know. Oh, Nick volunteered his family. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just mentioning this because the church will actually, or the council will actually vote on this, etc. But wanted you to know that we dropped off that big church Christmas tour because it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it was now third. It was next week, Thursday and Friday, and it's two to nine and so forth. But if we want to, I've made arrangements to be on the southern Christmas tour, which is uh, was which took place. Uh, they do it from four to eight on four to eight on Saturday, and then twelve to four on Sunday. So it's a little bit easier for us. And they they did it this week, so it's going it went on last night and this afternoon. So um, if we want to, we can be on that. If you don't know who all's on that, I can't name all the churches, but I know the two churches in Tilsit, a couple in Gordonville, the Methodist Church of Whitewater. And, uh, Old Bethel, I think. Old yeah, Bethel, yes, Old Bethel, sure. because oh, Carol tried to find it last night and never <laughs> find it. But, uh, anyway, we would be the one more northern one, but we're we're still closer to that one than would being the most southern one from the other two, because most of them are in Perry County and down to about Pocahontas, and it goes kind of a Pocahontas Oak Ridge line, and there's nobody left down here. Uh, so if we want to do that one. 
it might be, I, I would love to do the tour, but the other one was getting, I don't know, uh, two to nine was a long night, I can tell you that. It was a little bit too much sometimes, but I think the other one may be better received. It's more Cape County people, so we'll just keep that in mind, okay? Uh, I want to introduce the new council, or I'm not going to introduce and tell you who was elected last week. Uh, Kathy Turner will be the new church council president as of January, whatever day we install them. Uh, Stan Bridges will be the vice president. Secretary is Chrissy Lenicky. Treasurer is Bernita. Yeah, it's <laughs> just a good Treasurer is Bernita. Envelope secretary will remain Renee. Uh, and then the trustees are Larry Taylor and Bill Blake. Go play. So that will be your new church leadership after we install in January. So I think that was it, except for one more thing here. We have done this for the last several years, the reverse advent calendar, which I should have gotten out at the beginning of advent. It was in your newsletter, mm -hmm. but I did make some copies. A couple people asked last week, and they're laying on the podium in the back there. Um, this is the reverse advent calendar, and, and you know how that works is each day instead of opening a door and getting a chocolate or whatever you it's a box of cereal <laughs> yeah. etc all the way down uh, you can do this or i figured it up it's about 30 dollars worth of food uh, and if you want to just do the cash donation just if you put on your check or however you do it put it in an envelope so that renee and george know it's for the food bank okay i do i will tell you this you can do what you wish but i do know of working with pastor sam that the cash donations are always welcome because they have no cold, they have no storage for perishables. So they can't give milk and uh, produce, cheese, eggs, anything like that out, but they can give a certificate to Harps and they can go down and get meat, etc. So whatever you want to do, but I think the church has some budgeted too, correct? Yeah, for that as well, and we'll do all that presentation at once. But. Some people like to bring it in because it makes them feel like they, they've done their part. So there's some downstairs already. Yeah. Anybody else have anything? Birthdays. Chase Mueller has a birthday this week. Keith and Clara Bogus have an anniversary this week. How many years, Keith? 45. 45. Okay. And that's all. So I guess we won't send anybody to <laughs> That's just the way it is. So if you would stand with me for the call to worship, please. Come, let us use our voices to praise the Lord. Our mouths will shout for praise. <clears throat> let us use our minds to ponder the wondrous deeds of God. We will call to mind God's mighty acts. With all of our strength and being, let us worship the Lord of God. We will worship our deaths, our souls exalted God. We bow your heads, please, for the invitation. Lord of love and light, shine through our darkness, bringing us hope. Open our hearts for the journey, our eyes for the light, our spirits for the peace which you bring. Fill our mouths with laughter and speech with joys of joy, that we shall reveal the love which you which will surround us. We offer this prayer in the name of the one who is coming into the world, bringing your hope, peace, joy, and love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. If you need the words, they're on 241. We will sing Arise, Shine as we begin to light the heaven candles here.
Those who go out weeping, bearing the seeds for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Light three candles, see them glow, brightly so that all may know how three candles show the way, making our darkness bright as day. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Dear God, we carry many burdens and worry over many things. Help us to hear your promise in this Advent season, that in hearing we may receive the Spirit's gift of joy. And may our spirits be kept sound at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In whose name we pray. Amen. Thank you. If you open your emails too, I left the number off of there. 259. 259. I'm going to see angels through the rims of glory. Oh, they're right back there too. <laughs> Two steps forward and a step back, but that's kind of the way it is with preemies. And, and they were born how early? How much uh, early? Twelve weeks. Early. Twelve weeks early. So, but uh, and just to clarify, Avery and I S L A is pronounced Isla, just like Island. Think of it that way. Just take the the, the N D off. It's Isla, and that's a, a, a popular name for little girls right now. It's a beautiful name, but it's uh, it's I S L A, Isla. Island in Spanish. It's, oh, it's Island in Spanish. What do you say? So. And the other one's doing three 
three weeks. Yeah, and she has another son with a baby due in three weeks. So, you know, when it rains, it pours. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you keep the family of John Hurt in your prayers, uh, that is um, eight months' fiance Aaron's step grandfather passed away rather suddenly. Uh, not rather suddenly, but he went down kind of quickly. Let me put it that way. Was that Tuesday morning? Tuesday morning. Uh, the funeral and everything was in Memphis Friday. Okay, and uh, fortunately they got back uh, to New Madrid before the storms went through. So they, they didn't, they, they came on back pretty quickly. Um, I wrote something down here and I can't read it. Try this this. <laughs> Please keep the, all those affected by the tornado. Tornadoes. It's been unbelievable to watch. We were very fortunate. It was, I hate to say that because it means the other people are unfortunate. But if that had been 100 miles north, it would have been. If it had been 14 miles, it would have hit their her sister in Paducah, and uh, it will be interesting to see how all that plays out and so forth. But all of you have seen the pictures of the destruction and so forth, and it's, it's just sad. And I was looking at a, a friend of mine, Mike Williams, who's the pastor of Disciples of Christ Church at uh, Dexter, had some pictures of the Disciples of Christ Church in Mayfield, Kentucky. And if you looked at it, it destroyed the church. It collapsed everything. It, it literally stripped paint off the wood, and yet the pipes for the pipe organ were still standing, and the reed hanging in front was still hanging on the wall. And the cross was still on the And the office. cross was still up. Yeah, the cross was up. Is that, that the was, one where the Bibles weren't touched either? I, I, didn't, I haven't seen that one, but it was just, it's, it's just very strange how the tornadoes worked. And, but the, 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 the reed that they hang up behind the altar, uh, like basically on the altar here, still hanging there. Okay, now the dome collapsed on to everything, but. It is. It's just very really weird. Uh, anybody else I've missed? There is some that I've written it down. Oh, Lucas, please keep Lucas. Good morning, your prayers. He will have surgery on December 21st. Uh, I can't go up and go in, uh, so I'll just stay in touch with him. But Lucas is 14, for those of you that don't know, and he's going to have, they're going to cut an X. And then they're going to go in and cut between each rib and build a scalp thing because the cartilage is not growing properly and is compressing his chest. So he can't get, he's only got about 70% lung capacity. And he told me last week that when he gets home from school, he's pretty much just worn out. So, but uh, that's, Ryan says it's not as serious as it sounds. It sounds incredibly serious to me. But he said it's not as serious because they're not dealing with major organs and everything. They're just dealing with the rib cage. They're not going in and messing with the heart or the liver or anything. It's the rib cage. So that it's still going to be tough for a 14 year old. Yeah, I think it would be incredibly painful. So uh, keep Lucas in your prayers. Uh, anyone else? Beth? Uh, in reference to the uh, Kentucky, my sister in law, my brother and sister in law live in Lexington. And her, she, but she's from around the Paducah area. And her brother is the fire uh, chief uh, at uh, Bona. And so they are in heavily involved in the search and rescue. And uh, so, you know, she said, I said, we'll extend our prayers and our thank you to those people who have helped and are there to stand by. Yeah. So a uh, friend of ours that had the brain aneurysm in Memphis, he came home on his birthday, which was very bright. So he was able to come home, and he is home um, and doing well. Uh, so that's a joy. And then our dad um, went in the hospital on Tuesday, had surgery on Wednesday, and he came home on Friday also. And so, he had a blood clot in his leg again. Mm -hmm. I didn't yes. mention that until it, to see yes. if you mentioned that. Yes, so just prayers for him for continued healing. And um, we have an uncle in the hospital right now also um, with COVID. So oh, okay. pray for him. Uh, one of my coworkers, her mother in law, father in law, I don't know their first names, I just know their desires, and they're from down in um, Chaffee. But um, they both are in the hospital with COVID. They're in their 90s. The her mother in laws are going to bring her home on hospice. The father in law, he's on like the highest set of oxygen. They will not put him on the vent because he won't make it. So it's just kind of, they're waiting just kind of.
of waiting it out just to kind of see. She said they're talking, you know, they're watching TV, they're, they're coherent, they're talking, their bodies are just kind of slowly but surely getting out. Just prayers for that family. Don? We lost a good friend this last week, uh, Bernie Jean Boyd. I saw that. I wondered because he was from Cedricsville, and I wonder if he got that. Uh, Ruby McCoy, yeah. Uh, Beth's sister is back in the hospital, isn't she? Yeah, they flew her to the ER. Flew her to Barnes. She has some significant heart issues. Yeah, yeah. Fred? I didn't know if the drums had called you or not. Yeah, the drums called, but uh, and the, the, Paul's having a procedure this week. Uh, but uh, he needed to isolate for a little bit. I don't think it's anything real serious. It's just something that he did. It's a hernia surgery, yeah. So, uh, but they, he needed to isolate and stay away uh, for his own protection. Rex Rust, who is the son of Gary Rust, um, has pancreatic cancer and he's not doing well at all. Um, he's in Houston, and um, I mean, they're, he's near the end. So if you could remember, he and his wife, Sherry. Didn't you have somebody? Yes. Uh, Our grandmother, Joyce Shilley, turned 93 yesterday. That old bird just never gives up. <laughs> <laughs> She's strong. She's strong. She's strong. She's strong. She's strong. So any other joys? Chrissy? My dad got to come home Monday, and every day he is doing better and better and getting stronger. Um, I talked to him Friday, and he said, I never realized how sick I was until I started feeling better. So he is, he, I think we still have the kidney issue to worry about, but the pneumonia is clearing up and it's doing well. We got, we got to see the yes. grandbaby this week. That's what I have written down. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor baby. <laughs> we prayed for this baby who was born and immediately had heart surgery, and it's in Colorado, but it's Davis. His name Davis is Davis. Taylor, or, as we all refer to him as Hercules. Hercules, okay. <laughs> but uh, they got to see him and hold him this week, so that, that was a good one. And they have pictures. <laughs> they have pictures. That, that's what is written down there, Taylor Baby. <laughs> I had good, good intentions. Uh, one other joy uh, was, no, uh, I mentioned uh, Dee Dee Shriner last week of having a massive brain aneurysm. That's Kirlin and Eddie's daughter-in-law, and she had the brain aneurysm the Friday, early Friday morning at their house after Thanksgiving. She had a rough week that turned out very well. Uh, the blood that was trapped in her brain spasmed, and they had to go in and it caused some immediate effects, and they went into emergency surgery and put in some more shunts and did some things, and then Mike had pictures of her up talking and eating the other day. So she's, she's going much better too. So if you know any Carolyn, you kind of have that. And Mike, of course, is the pastor at Morningstar and that this thing. Uh, Lovely. Let's go to God and Barry's point. Father, we come to you at a time of joy, a time on the third Sunday of Advent that we should be focusing on joys, and yet there's so much in this world to be unjoyful for. But we sit and we look at the power and might of your hand, of the destruction that's been caused, and question why you would send something or do something like that. But we know it's not our ways to, it's not our way to understand those things. And we know that through you all things are possible. But we pray for all those affected, all those going through things, all those helping, and all those responders that are doing things to try to, to make people's lives better. We come today thanking you for being able to gather again, being able to celebrate Christmas and Advent together again, and for the ideas that being apart created, some new ideas and some ways to do things that were different but, but worked. And we thank you for having us look at things in a little bit different light, light occasionally. We pray for all here. We pray for those that couldn't be with us today. We pray for those who are sick and those who are not feeling well. We pray that they'll be with us again soon. And we continue to pray that you will use this church as a beacon, that you will let us know your purpose, and that you will bless us beyond measure. 
ask God as we ask you. We come today thanking you for the birth of Jesus Christ and knowing that we are all sinners and we need to be forgiven of those sins. And we ask now that you formally forgive us. We ask all these things in the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The kids want to come up. I think we've got some missing today because they're sick. I'd rather have them sick today than on program day. That sounds terrible, but, you know, on program day. Grace, there's no cats. Didn't you say, tell me yesterday you were going to a trampoline park for your birthday party? Not yesterday, on the 18th. Oh, on the 18th. Oh, okay. So on the 19th, I should look for cats. Good. <laughs> <laughs> if looks could kill. <laughs> Sawyer, why do you think we like those candles? Why is that flame important? Well, that was a little fair, unfair question. Okay, let me re ask this. Anybody go out and look at Christmas lights? Yeah. Anybody driven around and look at that? By the way, our neighbors are in full force. Yeah, yeah you've been by there. If you come by Texas, we'll come out and talk to you. Okay. <laughs> but it's in full force, uh, and it's pretty, they, they've done a lot of different stuff this year. It's a different program completely. And so it's, they have like the blow up stuff. Yeah, they have the blow up we, stuff. We saved the blow ups a couple of times. Yeah, we've saved the blow-ups. We went over and anchored the blow-ups down, and then they, they put the blow-ups in the other night when it was supposed to storm. No, they, so just, that, they just didn't blow oh, they just didn't blow them up. But anyway, why, why do people decorate with Christmas lights? Why do we like put lots of extra lights in the church? Why do we like this? Why, Sawyer? Because um, it's good. Um, God. It's church and we do it for God. Good answer. Yeah. Why do you think? Star that showed up to the barn? Because God's the light. Because God's the light. Jesus is the light of the world. And have you ever noticed that right before Christmas is the darkest day of the year? Mm -hmm. Did you know that? I think it's December 21st, isn't it? Yeah. It's the darkest day of the year. Why? Well, I could get into a long definition of how the Earth's tilting and going back and all that, but we're not going to just trust me, it's the longest day of the year. It's the shortest period of daylight and the longest period of dark. Okay? And so people at Christmas use a lot of Christmas lights. They use lots of candles. They do things because Jesus is the light of the world. And so... What's the opposite of light? Dark. dark. Which would you rather be in, dark or light? Dark. Depends how dark it is. Dark. Depends on how dark it is. <laughs> well, you know what? If it depends on how dark it is, there's some light someplace where you wouldn't know it was dark. <laughs> because if you've ever been in a cave when they turned out the lights, you understand what dark is. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Because there is no source of light whatsoever. But we use lots of lights, lots of Christmas lights. You all have lights on your Christmas tree? You have any lights in your house? No. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. Okay. But we use that to celebrate that Jesus is the light. Okay. And I think we have some special music maybe about light this morning. It's getting harder and harder to get up. We're going to do some Christmas songs medley. Hope you enjoy them. Start off with beautiful star of Bethlehem. Thank you. 
supposed to ask everyone to sing along with us on Silent Night. <laughs> <laughs> I always love their uh, music that they lay out and play from. Yes. <laughs> yes. Is it a little bitty tiny piece yeah, of paper? Yeah, actually they had a card, and I'm song. pretty sure there was no music on it. It was just the names of the songs, wasn't it? Uh, so, wow. You know, in your hymnals, to 272. We will sing here. While shepherds watch their flocks. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, we'll sing the first, second, and last verse, and you can stay seated. <laughs> what would he do? with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. And then Luke 1, 37, for with God, nothing will be impossible. And if you're wondering what that scent is, the Pencil family is having a Christmas gathering here at the after church in the fellowship hall, so that's the, the, the pork cookie. Can you smell it? I'm starting to smell it. I'm a little hungry now. <laughs> Through this whole series, one of the big pieces that we, we looked at, though, uh, during this Advent and Christmas time that we look at joy and wonder and peace and love, but we've kind of tried to look at it through the lens of the, the Jewish people who didn't know how this story ended. We know how the story ends. So it's, it's easy for us to have faith that Jesus is going to be born and all that, but the Jewish people didn't have that. And Proverbs 14, 12, and if you listen closely, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But the longing fulfilled is a tree of life. In other words, the longer you hope for something and it doesn't happen, the more heart sick you get. But once it's fulfilled, it becomes like a plant or a tree and just blooms and blossoms. We need to realize that for thousands of years, the Jewish race had been heart sick with a deferred hope. They had been a persecuted people. We need to look at the birth of Christ sometimes through their eyes. How do we keep our hearts encouraged when bad things happen? Yeah. You just look at the destruction of all the tornado. And how do you keep yourself encouraged during that? 
How do you keep a steady heart when our hope has not appeared? Like I said, we know how the story ends, but the Jewish people didn't. How did they keep their faith going when they didn't know for sure anything was going to happen? We have a little bit different view. Because we know and believe that the Messiah came, and that changes everything. And Hebrews 11 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, but we have the Bible, we have the Scripture, we know that it happened. We know how the story turns out. So it's not real hard to be faithful when you know how things work out. Those of you that have been through something and you thought, oh, I don't know why we have to go through this, but in the end, you realize it was a hard lesson, but it was a good lesson, and I learned something in the process. That's how faith is created. In this Advent season, our default setting is supposed to be to focus on the joy of Christmas. Right? But we don't really want to look at some of the other pieces of this story sometimes. Mary and Joseph lived in an oppressive society. Sometimes I get tickled with people talking about how horrible society is now and everything. And I'm not saying it's good, don't get me, but they lived in an oppressive society. They were heavily taxed by local and faraway rulers who, some scholars believe, demanded as much as 50 or 60% of all the common people owned their group. And when I say local and far away, that meant they were paying taxes to the Romans. Mm -hmm. so in fact, they made this trip to Bethlehem so they could be counted in the census. Well, let's not forget, part of the census is so they know when to find you, where to find you when it's tax time. Okay, it's nice to be able to do all kinds of other things, but one of the, I mean, I worked for the census people, George did at one time too. One of the reasons is so they have the correct address to send your tax bills to. Okay? So you have the federal, the Romans up here, but then you also have Herod, who was a Jew himself, who was taxing them to death. Okay? The fact is that Herod was so jealous of someone taking over his power, and we forget sometimes Herod's the bad guy, and he is a bad guy, but we forget he was one of them. Okay? He issued an edict that all the male children in Bethlehem under two years old be killed to try to keep another king from being born. And another little piece you don't know, well, and think of all, think of the devastation to the families and the devastation to that community as a whole. But all those children were wiped, all the males were wiped out there. But another little piece that people don't realize is Herod was so jealous he had three of his own family members executed so that they wouldn't take the power from. That's oppression. Okay? He was brutal. Times may not be quite as brutal now, but the world is still not full of polarities. Meaning, there's good versus evil, light and darkness, hope and despair. And the fact of the matter is, Jesus wasn't born into that picture that we see on a greeting card. You know, the beautiful scene. That it, Jesus was born in a time of turmoil and strife. We have to doubt sometimes that the nativity scene that we, we portray was really, truly accurate. Now, I'm not taking anything away from that. There's a beautiful nativity scene up here, and that is all part of Christmas, and that is all part of the celebration, but as I said, we know how it works out, <coughs> okay? But if you really read the Bible and understand, the shepherds came a little bit later, and the wise men may have came significantly later, okay? The shepherds we talked about last week were a totally disenfranchised group of people. They were the, the dirty, poor, homeless people who all they could do was herd sheep. Okay? But the angel appeared to them. Mary and Joseph didn't even have enough clout to get a hotel room. Okay? And when you think about that, that's kind of odd. Because Joseph was of the line of David, which meant he had royal blood. Now, it may have been so diluted back that nobody recognized it, but you would think somebody who was from a king's bloodline could get a room. They got a barn. Right? That was all that was available. God doesn't always provide answers for us of why the world is brutal and uncaring. We're not going to find it. Why is the world brutal and uncaring? I don't know. But we need to go back to what the angel Gabriel told Mary. For with God... Nothing will be impossible. 
This is repeated in different words when Paul writes to the Romans. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who it has been given to us. And that message reminds us that God never turns a blind eye to our suffering or the evil in the world. God doesn't turn a blind eye to our suffering or the evil in the world. He may not respond the way we think he should, but that doesn't mean he turns a blind eye to it. Instead, he uses the faith that we have to produce endurance and character and perseverance and hope deep, deep in those places of our heart where we most need it. That's what Christmas is really about. Understanding that that deep longing that the Jews felt was finally fulfilled. Understanding that hope deferred was no longer deferred. And the fact that Jesus or God sent Jesus unknown into a little stable, slipped him into the world under the nose of everybody, was brilliant. A lot of people, a lot of the Jews expected God to come down, or Jesus to come as a warrior down from the clouds with fire breathing and swinging a sword to take out the Romans. And if they would, he would have came that way as a man, what would they have done immediately? They would have killed him. They would have, it would have been a target. Nobody expected God to come into the world as a newborn baby. Hmm. Interesting. We live in kind of a unique time as well. We're caught in the middle of the already but not yet salvation period. Okay? In the middle of the already but not yet salvation period. Now, has anybody in here ever taught elementary kids? If you have, you're familiar with the saying, in a minute, but not right now. Okay? Some of you are laughing. Because if you tell kids, now I want you to do this, this, and this, they jump up and do it. So all elementary people know, and a lot of high school people too, know the phrase, in a minute, but not right now. Because you precede your directions with, in a minute, but not right now. I need you to move over here, and you to move over here, and you to move over here, and when I give the signal, we're all going to do it, okay? But in a minute, not right now. Because the second I say I need you to move over there, he starts moving, and you know, it's just chaos. Okay? We're kind of in that in a minute, but not right now thing, too. Because, now I've got to find my spot, we know that the Lord has came, or we know that the Lord has come, and we know all the meaning for Christmas, but now we wait for Jesus to come again. So in one way, we do know the fulfillment of this. We do know how the story ends, but we don't know how the second chapter ends. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope, and listen to this. And hope does not put us to shame. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. That's what we need to remember at Christmas. God's love is poured into our hearts through the celebration of the coming Messiah and that we must wait with deferred hope for him to come again. That's a huge piece of Christmas. Knowing that Jesus was born in the stable and that God's love is ultimately poured into our hearts so that we can have faith and perseverance and hope that Jesus will come again. Isn't it kind of our duty to wait with deferred hope? Because in the meantime, what should we be doing? I believe we're supposed to spread the word that Jesus is coming again. Don't we need to share that even though God slipped his son into the world in a lowly manger, 
He grew up and was crucified for our sins and will come again. Jesus' birth is initiated by a sequence of earth-shaking events that make our salvation possible. If you really think about it, his birth was initiated over all those years by a series of earth-shaking events, of different things. Of the walls tumbling when they blew the horns. All the different miracles. The woman, all the different things that happened in the Old Testament to get us to where we are. Those people waited thousands of years, and it all turned out. And we have to continue to wait for another earth-shaking event when Jesus comes again. In a minute, but not right now, we will face Jesus again, face to face. But in a minute, not right now. When you're tempted to despair over the hardships of our world, when you're about to give up on that deferred faith, when you just have all you can take and you can take no more, focus your faith on purpose, the purpose that God has given to us. In a minute, but not right now. And in the meantime, let your light so shine before men that they can see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Because in doing that, you're showing everybody your faith, your hope, your character, and your perseverance while we wait in a minute, but not right now. Um, so if you will stand and join me for our final hymn, which is 277, we will sing all three verses.